let me just say that I usually don't do baccalaureate addresses with crutches. Um, and I think my body got just so excited about he being here, my knee gave out. But I'm here. I'm here. And I'm excited. I want to thank President Tatum, Dean Rhodes, Provost Butler, platform guests, faculty, administration, and staff, family, and friends, and those who just stopped by, and graduates. Look at you, just grinning. <laughs> I remember and I recall. Let us pray. Oh God, as we come before you on this very special day, help us mark this day as the many days of our lives, holy and blessed. Lift us up and guide us as we go. Take these graduates or soon to be graduates and help them catch a glimpse of the excitement of living if they do not have it the wisdom of struggling if they have not experienced it, the passion of loving life and others and creation itself. Gather us up now, O oh God. And now may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, our strength and our redeemer and our rock, and those gathered who could said, Amen. A few years ago, I asked my mother, then a retired college dean, to offer some words of wisdom to me and others at a celebration that was not unlike this one. It was a celebration marking time the time to end, the time to begin, the time to savor the moment, the accomplishment, the regret, the survival, the joy, the skills and insights learned and left aside, and perhaps some sorrow that this part of life and living will soon join the human drama as history and one begins again, as you will do over and over again, if you take living seriously and live a full life rather than one that marks time with the slow beat metronome. It was a time of recognizing that you cannot stay in one place be it emotional, physical, political, spiritual, educational, and continue to grow. And so I turn to the wisest person I've ever known to find some help, to find some markers on how I should proceed wisely, caringly, daringly, faithfully. As I thought about what I could say to you this morning, her words came back to me. And so I share them with you as we mark this time of transition with you. She adapted them from the words of Mother Teresa. I was always amazed at who her sources were. People are unreasonable, illogical, and self-centered. Love them anyway. If you do good, people will accuse you of selfish ulterior motives. Do good anyway. If you are successful, you will, when false friends and true enemies succeed anyway. Honesty and frankness make you vulnerable. Be honest and frank anyway. The biggest people with the biggest ideas can be shot down by the smallest people with the smallest minds. Think big anyway. People favor underdogs but always follow only top dogs. 
fight for some underdogs anyway. What you spend years building may be destroyed overnight. Build anyway. Give the world the best you have and you'll get kicked in the teeth. Give the world the best you've got anyway. Well, I think the shorthand of what my mother was trying to say to me that night and what it means for you today, graduates, celebrate the gifts you've been given in your years here at Spelman anyway. Now let me be clear, I'm not encouraging you to get into a belly bumping contest about who has the best and brightest and biggest gift as you accept your diplomas tomorrow. There's a lot of work to do in this world of ours and its wars and hatreds and inequalities. And we need more than just one or two folks to help begin to set things right. Believing that you are the only, are the best thing that God has ever done in creation does not put you in that good creation of God of sunsets and sunrises, the holy of the full moon dancing on wet grass and dew, the divine who loves transition so much the seasons linger, the spirit of the whirlwind or the flaming bush, the mystery of the wheel in the middle of the wheel, the holy found in all the sacred texts and ways we believe. Because believing that you and your gifts are the only thing that God has to offer is not only wrong, it's sinful. To celebrate your gifts means to live an embodied, soul-deep faith that is molded out of the isness of your lives and that of others. It is to mold love, hope, and justice with a spirit and a spirituality that is a ripening into wholeness as a life journey and not a current event or spiritual two-step or roundhouse of academic arbitrariness or moment, momentary bout of holified indigestion. To celebrate your gifts means to share them as well as to receive them when you put together life and faith. To celebrate your gifts is to live in holy irony. It's not about how big, strong, powerful, massive, profound, or smart the gift is. It's not about the amount of money in your bank account, the law firm you make partner in, the specialty you choose in medicine, the excellence of your intellect, your ability to write in whole and grammatically correct sentences with a thesis, argument, and conclusion the agency you work in, or the city or town where it is located. All these things are good if they seek to lift up life and living for others and not just for yourselves. What we do and how we do it may be good and important, but they are not what gets God up doing a standing ovation in creation. What gets God up doing the electric slide, cha-cha slide, Texas two-step salsas, or reaching way back to moonwalk is when we refuse to accept what is as the best there is that it can be. When we live our lives out of the possibilities and not only to the realities. You can end sexism. You can eradicate racism. You can defeat homophobia and heterosexism. You can annihilate jingoism. You can banish war and violence. You can stop homelessness and don't you let us tell you you cannot. When you do this, you are answering yes to God's radical what if anyway. These are the things that get a divine mm, 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 mm. <laughs> Using your gift 
is to be responsible and to be willing to take responsibility for creating a more just, a more loving, a more hopeful witness each and every day, and realizing that measuring ourselves by sacred rods of righteousness rather than human yardsticks of malcontent is a radical witness to God's ongoing revelation, not only in history, but in the immediacy of our breathing. To be sure, this can be a difficult or demanding task, but you must live this hope. You must have dreams that are more powerful than nightmares, possibilities more radical than realities, and a hope that does more than cling to a wish or wish on a star or sit by the side of the road picking and sucking its teeth after dining on a meal of disaster and violence, which is your lives and the lives of others. So please, please take care that you do not spend your lives around careers built on a success ethic that is grounded in measurable gains and regrettable losses. Keep in mind that a self-made woman is bad architecture and not the templates God uses in creation. Despite all the challenges you will face in your lives. Hold fast, hold fast, hold fast to the any way of celebrating the gifts that are in you and in others. Remembering that you are not blessed with the only thing that marks us as made in God's image. For there will be others who bear these marks in other ways the old and the young and the in-between, brown, black, honey, red, and white, bisexual, celibate, gay, lesbian, straight, transgender. The reality is we're all queer folk. Democratic, green, independent, Republican, conservative, evangelical, fundamentalist, liberal, moderate, Pentecostal, radical, Yoruba or Vodun practitioners, Santerios and Santeros, Jew, Buddhist, Christian, Hindu, Islam, Sikh, and more. The property and the propertyless, female and male and intersex, the thoughtful and the clueless. The list goes on. And it is this great variety of gifts that have shaped you into righteous witnesses for a justice-seeking love that will not hold its peace, refuses to tolerate hatred dressed up in First Amendment drag. And to put it more bluntly, you are not called to be the poster children for the status quo. Stretch into whatever vocation you are called to do. Celebrate the spiritual gifts given to you and others walk around in them. Sit down and play with the holy sand God has given you. For far too many of us are skipping rope with paralyzing demons every day that slip into an endless spiral of horizontal violence without a dream or a nightmare. Refuse to live your lives in the past tense. The sad what ifs, the dead end maybes, the rootless and fruitless could bes. Your anyway must be shaped by a God who out Grecians the formula, out clairols the lady, out bakes the shake, out cuisines the lean, is everywhere you wanna be and don't wanna be and is the ultimate dial 1-800 collect. Can you hear me now? Good. Let your songs, let your anyway songs be ones that lift the spirit. Songs that demand a commitment. Songs that offer hope. Songs that are wrapped with love. Oh, you may step out in that anyway in fear at times. You may even sing that anyway off key at times, but sing it. Sing, even when the times of life are failing. Sing in the midst of joy and laughter. Sing 
when you feel like running, sing even when you're not sure if you can keep on standing, sing when you're wrapped up, tied up, and tangled up, sing using your heart and soul, sing even when you're bruised and broken in heart, sing using your mind and your intellect, Sing using your witness, your hope, your love, your faith. Sing holding on to the watchlight. Sing making a joyful noise to the Lord. Sing telling folks about that sweet inspiration. Sing no matter how old you are. Sing no matter how young you are. Sing being sexy for the spirit. Sing when folks tell you you have no voice for singing. Sing even when somebody has taken away the sheet music. Sing, because you've got a song in you, and you've just got to let it go. Sing anyway, Spelmanites, with lives of deep integrity and an unyielding belief in doing the work of justice by refusing to live in the folds of old wounds that make us perform postmodern minstrel shows of wickedness. I beg you, go out and help create communities that are torchlights for the goodness of creation, made up of folks like Miss Rosie across the street, Ms. Montez round the corner, Cousin Willie Mae down by the juke house, Mr. Press over at the barbershop, Ms. Gear who runs a beauty parlor out of her home, Mrs. M.O. Sneed Lee who taught generations of children to read, do their plus ones, times tables, how to spell, and not kill ourselves on the jungle gym, and Dean Mary M. Towns who liked to quote Mother Teresa about giving the world the best you've got anyway. Be good to the world as you leave this place. Amen.